Hello and welcome to the video. Today I'm going to be carrying on the FL Studio 20 basic series by looking at the Grossbeat plugin. This is an amazing plugin inside FL Studio and in this video I'm going to be explaining what it is and also going over all the basic and advanced features so there should be something for everybody. I've also left lots of timestamps in the description of the video so if you're just here for one topic or you want to jump around to something more advanced please feel free to use those to navigate through the video and find exactly what you need. Just before we get into the advanced stuff, I'm gonna spend about a minute explaining what the plugin is and how it works, just for anyone that's completely new to the plugin. So the plugin is called Grossbeat, and it runs inside any DAW, but in this case, it's I'm using FL Studio. It was developed by FL Studio. And what it is, is a time and volume manipulation plugin that you can load on your mixer. So you load it on the effects slot in your mixer on any channel, and in real time, it will affect the volume and also some time-based effects uh, dependent on the audio that runs into it. Now, it doesn't matter if the audio comes from MIDI, that's like running through an instrument in your software, or whether it's like a WAV file on your playlist, it will act exactly the same way. The plugin uses different envelopes, which you can edit to manipulate the audio that runs through it. If we look at the volume-based effects and run a signal like this into the plugin, and have an envelope that is shaped like this, the output sound will be this. Of course, there's many ways to edit these envelopes, and we'll talk about those in just a second. But now we're going to look at the time-based effects. So if you run a signal like this into the plugin, and you have this envelope selected, the output sound will be this. You can probably already tell that there's almost limitless possibilities with this plugin, so let's just dive straight in and find out everything we need to know about it. So now let's actually go into all the important details. So as I mentioned earlier, you load Grossbeat on your mixer. To load the plugin, just go to an empty effects slot, select a plugin, and in this case we're looking for Grossbeat. I've also loaded this other free plugin from Smart Electronics. It's basically a visualizer so that we can see the audio. This will come in useful for this video. Um, you can download that for free if you want it. I'll leave a link in the description. So this is how the Grossbeat plugin opens up. And it looks a bit complicated, especially for a beginner. But what we have over on the right hand side is an envelope section that I'll go into a lot more detail with. The top here, we have our time based section and the bottom is the volume based section. So I'm going to start on the volume because it's sort of the easiest to wrap your head around. So if I select the empty slot here, we'll see that this envelope has uh, nothing happening. The line here is at the very top and if I press play, I have this sort of sub bass 808 sort of sample playing. It's quite a sustained note. The visualizer just shows pretty much a flat line. However, if I select a different pattern, two beat gate for instance, look at the visualizer and listen. I'm going to select a different one, one beat gate. So you can probably see and hear that when the graph is at the top, all the volume gets through. When it's at the bottom, none of the volume gets through. Now we can edit these points by left clicking on them and dragging. And you see how the graph at the side matches what we have here. So without going into any advanced details, one way to use it is to simply click through these patterns and see if any sound are good or musical for you. For instance, you can get really sort of trancey patterns like this. And quite appropriate to the bass, there are side-chaining patterns like this, where you can see it's being side-chained. If you're simply clicking through patterns and you don't care about using the graph, you can just press this magnifying icon down here. It will remove the graph and then you don't need to worry about it. This dial down here is incredibly important. What this is is pretty much like a wet, dry dial for the volume. It lets you know how much of the signal is going to pass through unaffected. Right now, on the sidechain preset, the volume starts at zero and goes to maximum, as we can see on the graph here. However, if I lower this down, more gets through unaffected, so the side chaining is not as heavy, and then ultimately none. These dials work exactly the same way on the volume and the time dial at the top here, and I'd recommend using this as your wet dry blending dial instead of using the one on the mixer here. The one on the mixer should work, 
but potentially there'll be more issues with phasing and, and sort of time alignment and whatnot. So this can be a really good way to blend in the effect. Another thing that's worth noting is that sometimes you can hear it clicking on and off. And what we're gonna do is use the attack, release, and tension dials to deal with this. So if I take the attack and release all the way down, it's gonna sound pretty bad. So there was loads of clicking. And the reason for this is because the volume was being taken away or, or jumped up at the start too quickly and it just caused a little click there. So what we can do is adjust the attack to get to make sure that the click doesn't happen at the start and we can adjust the release to make sure that click doesn't happen at the end. Really smooth. If you do it too much, it just sort of blends back to nothing again. But if you get just the right amount, it's gonna sound really professional. Tension has to do with the sort of tension of that curve, how it rises up. The best way to get used to this is to just test it out for yourself and see what works. But often we don't want to just be stuck into one of their predetermined patterns. So if I go back to the empty pattern now, I'm gonna start manipulating it myself. So to add a point, you right click. To, to move that point, you left click. Right now, as I'm moving it, it snapped into one eighth divisions. So if I go to the side here, I can have it snap to quarters, thirds, sixteenths. So you can have as much precision as you want. And if you left click and hold alt, you can also snap it off the grid if for some reason you don't want to uh, be locked into that grid. If you click and press control, it can only move up and down vertically. And if you click and press shift, it can only move horizontally, which is really handy when you're trying to set your levels precisely. You can just simply keep left clicking and adding in as many points as you want. And you can really come up with some creative patterns this way. Along with simply creating points by right clicking, these work the same way that automation clips do in FL Studio. So you can right click on them, change the curve type, and also copy and paste values in. So in this case, I'm gonna change this to a double curve, and you can manipulate them like this and really make them unique. I'm gonna change this point to a stairs, and then if I drag in the middle, I get different steps, just like that. If I just look back to these controls here, and these work the same on the time and the volume side. So X is no snap, and then you have your different snap values as I showed a moment ago. And then here we have step editing. So if I just click here, what we have are steps that we can draw. And these will be snaps depending on which snap setting you have here. So if I press 16, they're gonna be very small steps, thirds, bigger steps, etc. The next setting is slide remaining points. And this is quite interesting. Typically, if I select a point, it will move side to side and no other points around it are going to be edited. But if I select slide remaining points, now if I select by left clicking, every node to the right will be slid along with it. Where step editing becomes a bit crazy is when you click on it and then you make sure snap is turned off. Now you're just drawing whatever shapes you want and you can come up with all sorts of creative steps that would be really difficult to program manually. And the last one here is freeze editing. So if you press this, it, the graph will be frozen and you can't edit it until you click that again. At the bottom here, we can select between the volume and the time envelope. So now I would be manipulating the time envelope in green, volume envelope in orange. I'll look at these controls down here in just a moment because the next thing we're gonna look at is automating between different patterns. So say for instance, we wanted to start on this one, but then at a different point in our song, I wanted to go to this gate and then back to this one. Well, all of these are toggled by MIDI switches. So you can do this with a keyboard or an automation clip. So if you right click, you can see that you can copy the value. And then if I right click again and create an automation clip, and I'm just gonna drag this automation clip right below the base here. What I'm going to do is left click, select a hold point, and I'm gonna left click and I'm gonna paste in the value. Now it's gonna start at this two beat gate. But at this point here, I want it to jump to the transcape. So what I'm gonna do is click on the transcape. I'm going to copy that value. Now I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna paste that value. And then you can just repeat this process. It works exactly the same on the time-based effects as the volume-based effects. You can just jump between different patterns. And then when it comes to jumping between these patterns, there's loads of different ways of choosing how to do it, whether you want to use a keyboard, use your mouse, or the automation clip. You can select this button here so that it holds on the key. So if you're using a keyboard and you have one selected, you can press on another one. And then once it's run through once, it will jump back. 
or you can select this button which will make it jump back to the first slot, the, the initial empty slot when it's done. You can use hold here to force it onto one pattern and then you can use trigger sync and position sync to make sure that it's lining up with your song and triggering at the right beat or the right uh, bar that you want it to be on. So you can trigger on quarter of a beat, for a one beat, two beat, four beat. And if you just experiment with those, you'll hear and see the sorts of big differences they make to the pattern. And the last thing to do with the time envelope is that it's worth mentioning that there's presets in here. So there is a default preset, but if you go into here, there's different presets for patterns, pitch shifting, stutters, turntable lists. So if I go to pattern, this is going to be loaded up and you can of course just change any of these however you like. So although I was manipulating the empty pattern, you can go into the quarter beat dynamic and edit and delete points as you see fit. And while I love using these volume based effects to shape sounds, the real magic of this plugin is in the time based effects, which just become completely crazy and the scope here is not going to be so useful for explaining these. As usual, the best way to figure this out is really to get hands on with it, but I'm going to give you a demonstration here. I have a lead that sounds like this. Very simple. And I have gross beat loaded on the master again. Now I'm going to switch through a few different time based effects and you'll hear what it does to the sound. So we had everything from note repeats, changing the pitch of the melody or changing the pitch on specific notes and then even like a DJ scratching sound and then like a tape stop. I think one of the most simple ways to explain what this graph does is to actually go to the manual and just show what they have on it. So if I open up the manual, courtesy of Scott, that image line, basically if the line's straight forward, it's 100% forwards. The diagonal line here is like a safety line. It just stops the audio. So this line down here. And then if you start going this way, you start going backwards in time. So this explains the scratching effect where it's going 100% forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards, and then it slows down at the end. Now, if you were to take a point and just drop it all the way down, it jumps backwards in the pattern to hit one of the notes that was hit earlier. So I'll show you here. If I just jump down like this, let's see what happens. So it's just sort of trying to hit a note that's already been played in the pattern. And this really does get quite crazy and quite complicated, but most people don't get too technical about it. You don't need to. You can simply select one that fits okay. And then just start manipulating points. So try... That's not what I want. That's maybe that's what I want. There's really no need to get too technical about it. It's more just about being creative and trying things out. Uh, that's how most people use this. They just try things out until it sounds good. And again, all the snap features and all these other features work exactly the same as the volume. And you can blend uh, the amount of the effect using this sort of wet and dry dial up here as well. You might notice when the pattern was playing that this clock was moving around. So if I go to this pattern here, what you can do is just manually scratch this yourself. kind of sounds a bit crazy, but that's possible. And then one of the last things to show is this hold button. And for some, sometimes this isn't actually immediately apparent because it doesn't hold it on one pattern, but what it does is holds it on one section of audio. So if I press the hold button, it's just, it's just gonna keep going around that first half of my pattern. And then if I release, I get to the second half of the melody again. And then something really cool is to go through the presets on the time-based thing. So presets, right? Pitch shifter. This is a bit crazy. So this should take my melody down a uh, full, uh, full octave. And I have de-clicking going on on this one here, but empty. Which sounds about right. Take it down a third. Which is just like completely reimagining the melody that I had. So if I just stop that there, then you go to presets. So let's find a different one. Uh, Turntablist, right? So we've probably got lots of different scratching patterns. Let's just put this on the whole mix. <laughs> So 
So there's all sorts of different creative possibilities in those presets there. Let's try another one. So uh, stutter. And you can definitely hear that when it comes to those stuttering effects, the slowdowns, the scratches, it's just automating a lot of that process for you. Most of this can be done with simple automation clips on the playlist, but having it just happening inside this plugin and automating all of that for you is really going to save you a lot of time in your production. And I mean, for a lot of producers, especially trap and hip hop producers, a lot of the time they're starting their songs by getting a sample grow speeding it and then that just inspires so much creativity for the beat making and the rest of the song and the melodics that they use and while it does seem like an incredibly complicated plugin it really doesn't require a, a lot of knowledge or understanding to use it in a creative way as with many vsts you know there's a lot of stuff going on under the hood and it can be quite intimidating but really you just want to load it up try it on a few different things i wouldn't necessarily recommend putting it on the whole master like i've got here definitely if you're using bass try this for side chaining especially if you've got a repeating kick pattern if you've got a melody or like a reverb tail or something that I often do is with a riser I have a riser stuttering so if I just get this little riser here actually and I'll just show you this because this is quite interesting transgate here sometimes what I like to do is stutter the riser going in and you'll actually probably have heard that on loads of the original songs the riser just stutters up like this You know, when that's hidden underneath, it's just a really cool way to add movement and rhythm to your song. The last thing I want to mention is there is click reduction for the time-based effects too. So if you click into this uh, here, you can have low, high, or off. And there are a few other options here, smoothing attack, removing DC offset. If you're just starting out, don't even worry about this stuff. It's, it's not super important. And then about lets you know that Gall and Reflex made this plugin. That really is pretty much it for this plugin. Please do uh, just try it out, test it on your mixes, try it with your basses, your melodies, and all sorts of stuff. Just get creative with it and enjoy using it. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a great day, a great week, and I hope to see you in the next video too. Bye for now.